Bless up, bless up, my viewers and my subscribers. Welcome back to another upload. So, right now, my viewers and my sub, quick and fast. Want to know if you continue to like, share, subscribe, leave your thoughts and your comments down below in the comment section. Like up the video, watch up the ads, my viewers and my sub. Share the vlog, share the video, them. All right now, quick and fast. I don't know, give you internationally, locally, in town and around town news. Right now, my viewers and my sub. So quick and fast, we're going to get back over to the Supreme Court right now. The public building in East Kingston. Superior instructed that gangster witness not be charged. Say cops, a policeman on Tuesday hinted that the decision not to charge the prosecution second witness a former member of the Wandan faction of the Klansman gang was made by his superior. The cop, a detective inspector in charge of the gang team at the Counter Terrorism and Organized Crime Branch, CTAC, made the claims while being grilled by the Chief Justice Brian Sykes why the former gangster was never charged. Sykes had intervened in the cross-examination of the officer by defense lawyer Lloyd McFarlane who is representing alleged gang leader Andre Blackman Bryan one of the 33 individuals on trial in the home circuit court in downtown Kingston the judge inquired why at the time the law enforcer did not stop the then gangster from incriminating himself or why did not caution him sykes further asks man walk in a station tell police he transported men to commit multiple slapaways used to be a done made life of death decision and no charge no nothing he is free as a bird sleeping soundly at night. Arguing, the police investigator must have accept the former gangster account of even in the gang. Sykes asks why the ex-gangster was not charged with even a minor offense or given a plea deal. I can't answer, the detective inspector said in response to the series of questions. Sykes then inquired whether the officer's answer was refusal or an inability to provide the details. It was at that point that the officer explained that the decision not to charge the prosecution's second witness were taken after he sought to advice from his superior and legal advice further he infers that the decision was made at a higher level but sykes would not relent asking whether the officer was told the reasons for not charging the witness a self-styled done who work with undercover police officers to gain evidence against alleged gangsters. The detective inspector told the judge that he could not speak to the reasons for not charging the ex-gangster, despite the decision being held about the case. Similar questions reveal to why the prosecution's second witness was never charged were acts of a previous police witness. He had informed the court earlier this month that the witness could face criminal charges in the future based on ongoing investigation. While the witness was never charged for his role in the Wandan faction of the Klangsman gang, the prosecution first witness who had testified that he was the driver of the gang and a banker was charged with anti-gang offense. However, those charges were later dropped by the prosecution. Earlier 
McFarlane had pressed the detective inspector on why the prosecution second witness was not cautioned while giving his statement or was informed by him that what he was saying could be used against him in the court of law. Yeah, that my viewers are mess up. Yeah, man, I hope you are listening and my viewers are mess up because we are get down to the nitty nitty gritty gritty of the situation in my viewers are mess up. So I hope you are there with me you now. Yeah, man, I see you. I will watch and listening, but you now nah, press like. Yeah, man, before we start about the video again, man, press like, man. All right, thank you. Thank you for press like. Let us get back to the meat of the matter right now, my viewers and my sub. So anyway, while admitting that he had not instructed the witness to be cautioned, the detective inspector said he had no indication or no information that suggested that the man was anything other than a witness at the time. However, the officers stressed that he realized that the witness was involved in gang activities after he read a statement from the witness which was recorded by another police officer. The detective inspector reiterated on the cross-examination that he was not the one who made the decision not to charge a witness. Meanwhile, McFarlane also insists that the police had no case against Brian without the statement of what the witness and the first prosecution witness who was also a confessed gangster. The police dismiss those suggestions made by the lawyer. McFarlane then turned the spotlight on other anti-gang charges that were laid on Brian and demanded an update on them. The officer would only indicate that the matter remain the subject of the court's proceeding. In the meantime, another police officer took the witness stand on Tuesday afternoon. She is Detective Corporal assigned to the Jamaica Constable Force, the JCF Major Investigation Division, MID. The corporal testified that she was called to the scene of a double slap away in an inner city community in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, called New, Nur New Nurse of Fisheries. When she arrived on the scene, the officer said she saw two chartered remains huddled together among the rubble of a house. The ribs and the skull of the chartered remain were also visible to the policewoman while the smell of the burning flesh reportedly permanents the ear. Additionally, she spent she said spent shell casing were at the scene. Two months after the double slap away, the female police investigator recounted that she was present at the autopsy of the two deceased individuals at a funeral home. Two women who claimed that they were the mothers of the victim were also present for the autopsy and they were later swabbed at a JCF laboratory. Those samples were be sent for a DNA analysis. The prosecution's second witness had testified last month that Brian went to fishery in 2017 and allegedly take out a man known as Bubba Sparks, a top shooter of a rival gang. Sparks' girlfriend was also taken out by another gangster despite the woman begging for her life. The gangster then torched the house with the two inside. Brian, 31, and a man and a woman are being tried under the Criminal Justice Suppression Criminal Organization Act, better known as the Anti-Gang Legislation, on an indictment with 25 counts. They have been charged with multiple offenses by being a part of a gang, a criminal organization, illegal possession of a firearm, 
illegal possession of ammunition facilitating conspiracy, the offences were allegedly committed between January the 1st of 2015 and June the 30th of 2019 in St. Catherine. The trial will resume on Wednesday. Some of you as I'm a sub, thank you for the time I want to spend for watch and listen and like the video because the thing I get at the number of you as I'm a sub. Yeah, man, the thing I get at the number. The thing I reach down to the, the nitty gritty. Although you have over about 50 witnesses who have to take the stand. And right I know this is about the, the fifth witness. Some of you as I'm a sub, there's a lot more to go. I want me telling you, say there's a lot more of you as I'm a sub. I mean, there's a lot more to go. The case, no, there's no way yet, my view as I'm a sub. It no reach no way yet, my view as I'm a sub. There's a lot more to go in that case. So make sure so you know, stay tuned, you know, listen, you know, like, you know, comment, and you know, share. And make sure so you know, subscribe. Because we're on the road to 4K subscribers and beyond. Someone want to shoot up the video quick and fast to at least a 20k views, my viewers and my sub. Quick and fast. So anyway, like, share, comment, subscribe. Bless up. Until another one.